Hey, Craig here. So it's been a while since I made a video, so I thought I'd start off the year with a 50-ton custom shop press build, right? So in some previous videos, I uh, made this 20-ton uh, press brake. Uh, it's actually not getting the kind of use that I'd hoped to get out of it. Uh, some business things changed, so it's kind of gotten stuck back here behind the, uh, the corner notcher and the uh, uh, slip roller here. But uh, anyways, this is the, the basic idea what I'm going to be doing. It's just going to be 50 ton. It's going to be a, a smaller version. So like before, I'm basing this on the Redline Engineering or Redline Stands is the name of the website. Website. I'm basing it on their uh, components. Uh, this is a 50 ton, uh, what they call a double acting cylinder. The other, a lot of the other presses are single acting and they use like a spring or something like that to get the cylinder to go back up. Uh, this is actually double acting, so there's going to be hydraulic fluid going in the, the top here to actually press. And then there's going to be hydraulic fluid going in the bottom to push it back up. This is a <coughs> pretty beefy compared to the other one, but uh, it's 50 tons. Uh, this mounts a little differently. This actually has mounting screws on the top here of the ring. So that's actually going to have to uh, bolt from the, from the top side of the mounting plate. The actual hydraulic uh, pump, I've got it out here in the other building. I haven't uncrated it yet, but this is actually uh, electric hydraulic. Now this is going to move a lot faster than the other ones. I also got a, this comes with the oil gauge here, but that's going to be in a place where I'm not going to be able to see it. So I actually got another one. I suppose I could have just plugged this off, but anyways, I got another one that I'm going to mount up somewhere where I can actually see it. Uh, I'm just going to leave this uncrated, uh, leave this crated. I'll show you, I'll put a picture up on the screen of what it looks like on the website. So I'm not exactly an engineer. I'm actually an electrician turned manufacturer. Um, so as far as the design of this, I basically just look at the, looked at the Harbor Freight version of a 50 ton press, looked at the steel that they used, and actually I'm, I'm making it smaller so it actually doesn't need to be as strong because it's narrower. And I actually went with a thicker uh, C channel. This is actually a six by a two and a, a two and something, and this is what they call a six by thirteen pound or something like that. You know, it's like uh, just under was it point four three something uh, inches on the web. So this should be uh, pretty strong. Pretty strong. Uh, I went with a fourteen inch wide. It's gonna be the, the opening is gonna be a little. I went with uh, I think it's six uh, thirty inches on the upper here. It's basically gonna be. I do this without letting it fall there. Uh, there's gonna be two of them here, one on either side. This is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna lose, you know, like two inches on either side here. I suppose I could have gone a, a hair wider, but uh, with what I'm, what I'm doing, everything is like 12 inches or something like this that's going in here. So 12 or 14 inches, so should be plenty big enough. So as you can see, the actual span from where it's connecting here and here is actually really small. So I'm um, sure, I'm assuming this is going to be plenty strong enough. This is going to be fully welded. And in fact, I'm taking it to the welder uh, today. That's why I'm filming this video now. I just wanted to show these components before I send it off to the, uh, the welder. Now, as far as the mounting plate goes, I'm using... Uh, this is... Uh, um, they gave me the uh, the sheared end. Oh well. 
When they shear this, it actually deforms on the end. I wanted two clean cuts, but well. So this is uh, eight by uh, inch and a half hot rolled, and I had them cut at ten inches um, based on the you know the width of what it's going to be. Basically, I just need to bore. Actually, I think I'm going to take this to a, uh, a local machine shop and just because trying to bore you know, uh, like a five inch hole in this on the Tormach is gonna take, you know, forever. So, so I'm gonna take a machine to a machine shop, have them bore the hole for the cylinder and the through holes to bolt the, uh, the cylinder to this plate. And the plate is just gonna get welded to the top of this frame, just like the other one. I'm hoping that it's wide enough. I may end up having to brace the ends of this but we'll see how it works out. Okay, so this is the uh, the actual shop press that I'm uh, taking the equipment from. They actually sell the, the parts, so uh, that's the RAM right there. Uh, I was going to get this whole unit. Uh, I think it was like $7,000 uh, delivered to where I live. Uh, but actually, they didn't have it at the time. And this thing is actually bigger and heavier than I really need. So I just decided to make my own under those circumstances. And uh, so yeah, so I got the cylinder, I showed you that. This is uh, what it looks like over here. Um, it was like $2,500, 25, so it was $2,500 for the pump. This is, uh, I think it's 9,000 PSI. I don't remember all the specs on it, but yeah. And the uh, the cylinder itself was about a thousand dollars delivered, so I mean, it'll end up being cheaper and it'll be smaller. Uh, of course, I got the cost of the the metal and the welding and stuff, but it's gonna end up working out better for you know for what I'm using it for. So, so here's what it's gonna look like when it's all finished. This is uh, drawn up in uh, Fusion 360 here. I can't. Well, I've only got one hand to operate this, so I can't really fly around, but I can actually operate the uh, the cylinder. Um, so, all right, so anyways, that's what it's going to look like. Right. So, yeah, so I just thought I'd make this video series, too, in case somebody else was wanting to do something like this themselves, or if anybody has any advice on what they think I might should do. Uh, with this, if I should change anything or anything, but uh, and it's, it's going to the welder today, but uh, yeah, so so price wise, yeah, so the cylinder was about a thousand dollars delivered, the hydraulic pump, um, twenty five hundred dollars delivered, like I said before. I think all the steel, I couldn't find this channel, this size of C channel, locally, so I actually had to buy it online. So it was. Um, I don't know what the delivery delivery was like, hundred and sixty dollars or something like that. It was like about seven hundred, something like seven hundred dollars for all this metal. A local supplier could have gotten this, but they said I would have to buy you know a whole twenty foot length or something like that, uh, which would just end up costing more. So um, I just ordered it online. The, uh, anyways, the main reason going with 50 ton, obviously, is for uh, more power. I'm going to actually be, normally I just stamp stuff that's like 16 gauge. Uh, I'm actually going to be stamping or forming um, uh, 11 gauge, 8 inch steel. So I needed the extra power. Um, being that it's uh, electric hydraulic, it's actually a lot faster. I guess these have like... Um, I don't know what the it's two stage a double acting which is uh, hydraulics going in both directions but it's two stage uh, when it's not under load this thing goes really fast it goes like um, two inches in about five seconds so yeah so this thing is really fast so that's part of it 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 should actually double my my production of, of like regular uh, stamping or forming because it, it's just gonna run twice as fast at least so just the time savings on that is actually gonna pay for itself plus the uh, the, uh, the new product lines I'm gonna be able to uh, have 
you know, being able to stamp thicker stuff uh, will be worth it too. So, anyways, all right. Well, all, as always, if you like this video, I appreciate the thumbs up. If you'd like to see me more videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, if you have any uh, questions or comments or any suggestions or anything, feel feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And uh, I guess that's it. All right.